Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. In today's news, Off Grid City Couple officially has running water. Check this out guys. Amazing. So today's video is going to be all about how we set up the plumbing to connect those two tanks together. How we set up this tap over here to access the water. And at the bottom over here, we also have a cam lock. Oh. So that's for hooking up a firefighter pump. And this over here is a cam lock to connect a one inch poly pipeline that can go essentially anywhere that we like. And there's no pump here for now. It's all gravity fed. And as you can see, the pressure is pretty good. Pretty good. So as long as the level of the water in the tanks is this high, we've got water. So without further ado, let's go and check out how all this was set up. The first part of this project involved digging a trench to connect the two tanks together. This part is pretty uneventful, so we won't focus too much on the mundane shovel work. The second step was to ensure that the tank outlets are clean and free from any dirt or debris, so that the fittings that screw in will be watertight. And now, getting started on the actual plumbing work, we have a two inch poly nipple, and I tried it on a tank outlet first to see how snug the thread was to ensure that I apply the right amount of plumber's tape. The thread had plenty of wiggle room, so I went with six wraps of the tape. And likewise, for the two inch ball valve that will be connected next, the connection once again had some wiggle room, so I did another six wraps or so there. Trying the components on like this before applying the plumber's tape is a great way to ensure that you use just the right amount for a snug fit. Next up, the two inch nipple was fitted to the tank and you can see there's some resistance there, but it wasn't too loose or too tight to screw in. Next, the two inch ball valve went on and the whole assembly was tightened with some multi-grips. After that, we had another two inch poly nipple that connected the threaded poly T. The next step was to install threaded elbows onto the T and these ones came with a male thread so there was no need to use another nipple there. And once the elbows were on, we had another two inch nipple to connect the two inch elbow and connect to here that will join the two inch poly pipe that is connected to tank number one. And with elbow fittings, it's really easy to get them on pretty tight without needing any other tools. And now, with all of these fittings assembled, it was time to connect the two tanks together. And when cutting the poly pipe, it basically needs to be long enough to reach the tip of that elbow, but I cut it slightly longer, just in case. 
And a quick safety reminder here as well is that if your poly pipe is curved and you're holding it down while cutting it, be careful not to have it rebound at you after the cut. Next up, we have the fill mac end connector assembly here and a rubber mallet works really well to knock the little connector fitting into the poly pipe. After that, it was time to connect the poly pipe onto the fittings that we just assembled. And the beautiful thing about poly pipe is that it flexed relatively easy to fit into place. And when assembling these kinds of round fittings, these round oil filter pliers are real handy for getting them nice and tight without putting too much pressure on the thread. And just like that, the assembly is all complete. The part on the right is ready to be buried once we check for leaks, and the part on the left will be above ground until the third tank is installed. Next up, we installed an end connector and ball valve to the end of that poly pipe line to add a cam lock to the assembly so that both of the tanks could be easily connected to a firefighter pump. And the next fitting was another poly elbow with a male thread that slotted straight into the ball valve. And next up, to connect the 2 inch elbow to a 1.5 inch cam lock to suit our firefighter pump, we used a reducing bush followed by a 1.5 inch cam lock. And these cam locks are available with male threads too to avoid needing yet another nipple. But most of our cam locks have a female thread, so I'm trying to keep the fittings consistent so that they fit in with the rest of the system and can be easily interchanged. And now in this last part of the setup, we drilled a hole just under one inch in diameter in our poly pipe to add what's called a tapping saddle. As the name implies, it allows us to tap into a water line and this is how our tap will be connected to the system. These tapping saddles are real convenient because they're easier to install than a T-junction and also cost a lot less. And now the next part was a one inch riser that screwed into that tapping saddle. And the reason I chose one inch fittings here over smaller ones was to ensure a nice flow of water because this tap will just be gravity fed from the tank. Then onto that riser we added a poly elbow and the reason the tap is so high up is because the bottom part of that assembly will be buried later on and the level of the tap will be lower then. Next up, we had the one inch ball valve and another elbow that screwed into it. Once again, you can skip the nipple here if you have an elbow with a male thread. And lastly, I added a one inch cam lock fitting so that we can easily connect a one inch poly pipeline to transfer water wherever we need it. of what it looks like up there. All right guys, so we're up here on top of the concrete tank and let's take a look inside. So that's the space there and there's an echo. <laughs> And one other really cool thing is that if you buy a couple of tanks from Graham's Precast Concrete Products, uh, I got this key for free 
to basically lift the the manhole lids on here. So you lift them like that. Now I don't know if that's a deal they have going for everyone, but if you don't have one of these, I'm sure if you ask nicely, you can get one as a bonus. But if you need to lift one of these lids, as a fun fact, that is the attachment there. What you can use is a normal claw hammer that you use to put in nails. It's got the claw on the back, so you can use them to lift these lids up as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and fill this tank. So coming back to the ball pump now, let's get it started up. And just like that, the tanks were now being filled up with water. And as the water was filling up, you'll notice it does change color slightly to an orange tinge. And that's because the iron in the bore water was oxidizing. It all settles to the bottom of the tank eventually. And you can learn more about that in our water testing video if you're curious about how bore water behaves. Alright guys, we've been pumping for about three and a half hours into this tank and it's now almost full. So I'll give you a quick look at that. So this is pretty promising because I thought it would take us six hours to fill up the tank but it looks like it's only gonna take four hours, so it means that the flow rate of our pump is even quicker than we thought, so that's cool, and tank's full of water. And now with the entire system assembled and the tank's full, we checked the plumbing for leaks, and when all looked good, we covered everything back up with dirt. Here we're putting down some Kakuya seats and you can see the ones over there have already taken off that I put in after installing the tank. And as always we rake our seeds in so the hungry birds don't steal them. Alright guys, so that's our setup and of course this bottom pipe here is going to be buried further down the line because we're going to have the third tank right here. So for now we've got two tanks with 20,000 litres and now that all this is set up, what we're going to do next is track how much water we end up using between the two of us just to share with you guys some figures for how much water is required for two people to live off grid with a simple setup. So we'll share that in the next episode and see you guys there.